news and then we will then jump into our AI review room to review four different technologies. So the let's jump into AI news. All right, Juwan, take it away. Awesome, awesome. And this looks familiar. I'm pretty sure it looks familiar to you, Mark, right? <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is the rabbit. This is something that Mark and I actually did a review on or pretty much an overview on because we didn't actually have the product in hand, but we gave an overview based off of our understanding of what we see and what we do day in and day out within this space and how these technologies are utilized. And so it was a very calculated and a review from us. We got a lot of feedback about the review that we provided stating that we didn't possess the product. So how could it be a review? We understood and we heard you loud and clear, but nonetheless, even without touching that product, we didn't follow that rabbit down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and that's what they're telling you. You probably shouldn't follow this rabbit down the rabbit hole. And, and why is that? Basically this review of the rabbits R1 highlights several limitations and issues with the device itself, despite its appealing appearance. So you can see it's a separate device that you have in your hands that you pretty much complements your phone because it's not a voice device, but nonetheless, it's certain actions that this language action model was supposed to do for you. The device itself looks slim, cool, nice design, sleek, but it's priced at $200. And essentially it's still in beta right now, despite it being released to the masses for us to purchase. Um, it's still in, in, in beta and now they're expecting the consumers to help with this development. <laughs> and so we saw that coming a mile away, but the review points out that the R1 struggles with task that, that deviates from very specific conditions, such as being able to handle spreadsheets and other types of documents. That was one of the things that, that we touched on is the fact that it was going to be able to take daily tasks away from you and take action. Whereas with your large language models, they pretty much just give you data. You prompt request information, it feeds it back, aggregates it and gives it to you in different formats. But this our rabbit is supposed to take action. And I don't think it's taken action the way that a lot of the consumers would have liked. Additionally, the device failed to perform some of the tasks that it was supposed to manage, like accurately editing a spreadsheet or summarizing a novel. That's something we wanted. I mean, we can have chat G um, GPT or Perplexity, Copilot, any of those, those others summarize a book for us or give us a synopsis, a high level overview of anything that we're, that we specified that we need assistance with. But uh, this book, this um, device has struggled with that. And so there was a number of other drawbacks, which included a lack of reminder functions. That was one of the things that stood out to us. I, I will want a reminder if you're telling me that I can use this device to book an Uber. And I we use that example and I, and I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. And I shared it with my daughter. I'm glad we didn't make that investment in this device, but she's a <laughs> college kid and she goes out with her friends. College kids do what college kids do. Might need a designated driver and don't know who, but everybody's under the influence. So now you just use this rabbit to, to place, to book an Uber for you. And so those are some of the tasks that you were looking forward to do, which it's not really functioning as desired. So those reminder functions when your Uber is about to show me, or when a calendar invite, calendar event that you need to, to, to attend, those are some of the things that this article talked about. And as even the, the voice recording feature, it has poor sound quality and inconvenience of being logged. And you have the inconvenience of being logged out of this R1 quite a bit, especially when you're taking notes. And so they're basically saying, don't follow this rabbit down the rabbit hole. And they even took it a step further. And you will like this one as well. They took it a <laughs> step further and they made a suggestion of which you can use as an alternate. You'll never guess what that is. Oh, no, not a Android or iPhone, did they? No, even better. It's even better than that. <laughs> Landline. <laughs> the Humane AI pen. Remember we oh, did a my God. Well. They're saying that's a better alternative than using this device. Yeah. And so no I way. can see a lot on the Humane AI pen. It's gaining a lot of traction. But nonetheless, this is one of those things that from a review perspective, we gave you our overview. We gave you our take. We got a lot of commentary and a lot of feedback back from the community, which we're 
appreciative of because it gives us greater insight as to why one thinking and also helps us build out our material and sharpen our skills. But nonetheless, I think we were spot on with this remark. I think we were spot on and we didn't chase this rabbit down the rabbit hole. (laughs) Yeah, I I, uh, read some of the reviews afterwards also, and a lot of people said it's a glorified Android app that could easily work a lot better on a um, Samsung phone or your Apple uh, device itself. So it's quite interesting. Yeah, because we work in the wireless space and we understand latency and devices that are not able to run the native software seamlessly and co- uh, and then it's just so slow. It doesn't take long for the end user on the device who says it's worthless to me because the standard is the Android device and also the iPhone. So if you're not going to be at that standard or better, you're going to struggle as an organization. That device is going to struggle because that is everybody's standard now. Exactly. The bar, it's, it's a high, it's a high bar, which has been set. And, and in our space, when these devices don't perform because it's a, your margin of error is slim to none. And so if you miss it, it's a miss. And also, yeah. and ultimately this device in our environment would be an, an, an expensive doorstop in a hospital environment <laughs> yeah. because they're not going to carry it around. And so that's one of the things that you really have to make sure that when you go to market, you, you fully understand and your device has been put through rigorous testing so that it's ready to withstand the day-to-day usage and meet the expectations of the consumers. I'm not paying $200 for that device. We talked about yeah. it. Back then. I wasn't paying $200 for that device hmm. because for me, I just didn't want to carry around a second device. And it's funny that you said that about they're thinking that this could have been an app that goes on one of these other Android or iOS device, I think we covered that as well. Yeah. From an app perspective, what makes them think that Android or iOS wouldn't just take this technology and incorporate it into theirs anyhow. So that way you have that one single device, that one throat to choke, that single source that you're carrying around. So that was my biggest takeaway from it when I saw it and, re- and read the reviews earlier that we did. So yeah, technology behind smartphones and the chipsets are so sophisticated. They have been honed and developed through the years. Just like the new, I mean, when the iPhone came out and they had tons of bugs, I remember it uh, vividly, and also with the Android devices. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was interesting. It was interesting. You know, oh, all righty. The, all the white rabbits. Air brain. You know, they had some interesting headlines. <laughs> And I I thought that was pretty interesting, but nonetheless, um, we were spot on. I feel good. Kudos to us. That's right. All (laughs) righty. Let's jump to our next one. We are going to talk about a Chinese company that has launched a robot. And we did a little segment on, what was the name of the robot that OpenAI had? Was it Thing one, or what was it? <laughs> he said? Thing one. No, I don't think it was thing one. I think it was calling it thing one, thing two, based off. Was it? Um... It was something, but but <laughs> it's interesting. The challenge is going to be for American companies is that Chinese companies are going to definitely be some of them are going to be at the leading edge of technology, and you are going to be competing with them. Whether it's robots or software, it's going to be very interesting because there's a lot of software. It's actually one piece of software now I use. I didn't realize it's based out of China, and it's a really good piece of software that I use, and it was dirt cheap. And I went, oh, okay. That's how they're going to win market share based on great product at a low price. It's like they've done with the TV market, flat screen TVs. Now you can get a great 65 inch flat screen TV for under 500 bucks. It's hard to believe. That's definitely hard to believe. Lazardi Time Entertainment said, love RoboCop. (laughs) Yep. All righty. So let's look at what they have right here. So this is a robot. And basically, this is not, they call it teleoperating. It's nobody operating this. This is all autonomous done by the robot itself. It's looking at the process. And so you can see what they're trying to do with the cups. And then, of course, now they have the wine glasses with a little, and boom, pulled it without dropping it. 
and then human-like operation. Now look at this right here. You can see it's analyzing a white container, red pen. So it knows to say, okay, that booklet, you pick that booklet up. Where do I put it? Oh, I'm going to put it in this container here. And then it knows, okay, I need to open up that drawer. Then put the ping pong in. Looks like cars and I don't know what that other thing was. And then it says, okay, that pen. And then it looks like, okay, I need to put it right into that. Amazing. And then, of course, you need somebody to cook for you, Juwan. There's somebody to do cucumber. Looks like you get you a little red pepper there. Yeah. Oh, make you a little sandwich there. <laughs> and put a little salt in there. And says, oh, okay, I'm done. And here is four. Give it to him. Open a bottle. And it's interesting. They didn't use five fingers. They're just using the little two things, prongs there to actually open things. That's pretty interesting how they can do that. Look at that. Can open your beer for you, Juwan. Man, okay. it's a good thing I don't drink a lot no more because I would definitely have <laughs> open my beer. Open a bottle of wine here. My wife uses that type of device all the time. And put in a decanter there to aerate the wine. Look at that. It was pretty smart knowing that it can do that. And then, of course, folding. It looks like a napkin there. I don't know if he's doing a very good job at that, but. <laughs> I bet. Oh, right, down the <laughs> right. Amazing. And then was watering the plants. And then cutting on the light. And then doing a little vacuuming. Amazing. Now, now he was that good. He can throw it straight in the trash. Can. Yeah, man. He was really good. Look at that. So he's just following this person here. All the different types of moves. And in real time. So... Chinese is real, are really, the companies out there are for real, and they are going to make a big impact. Look at that, right in Chinese there, which is quite amazing there. What's your first thought? What came to mind when you saw this? When I saw this, I thought it was something that, I know we had, was it the Will Smith movie, the AI movie? And robot. Yeah. And I can see that the what it's trying to do is think through by visual. It built that AI model to say, okay, let's train it to do these things. And it can remember that. And I think for simple tasks, I think the robots are going to do some amazing things. But to move to do multiple things, it's still going to be quite a few years away. But I, as you can see, that I've, there is going to be a big race uh, amongst countries and companies to bring out robotics as quick as possible and to do some of the most, I would think robotics could definitely be helpful in the most dangerous type of jobs. Can it do go in to fight a fire or go to a mine and go to certain areas that can do different multiple types of things? Security and different Thing. It, it, it will be interesting to see the use cases and how people accept them. Because I, I know there are type of robots out there now, but a lot of them are just pretty benign. Let, well, let, exactly. But let, let's call it what it is. What is it? The Was it the Roomba or whatever yeah. it's called that just, just robotic cleans, it, cleans your floors for you, got dust for you. Now it's more advanced. Some of them even can mop because they have a special functionality, the more you pay, it, it can do some of that for you. But nonetheless, that's what we're evolving into. We're going to, it's going to take away those types of tasks from us. Right. And so repetitive tax. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to iRobot. And I, I go back to the scene to whereas Will Smith saw a robot carrying a purse mm -hmm. and he chased that robot down and the robot was running from him. Right. He finally caught up with the robot, tackled it, but it was right there in front of the robot's owner. And the, and the owner was like, what are you doing? He was like, this robot is carrying a purse. You were like, yeah, I sent him back home to get my purse because I needed my inhaler. And, and it just makes you think of how far we're, how far are we evolving? We've come a very long ways to whereas this robot is 
imitating human motion and doing tasks and learning. So that motion that it just learned now, it can do it on its own. But I'm right. curious, do you have to give it a name? Say, do that dance I just taught you. That This dance is called the go. So do uh-huh. the go. And then it just does the go or, or do, what's, what's my guy name? Napoleon Dynamite, do the Napoleon yeah. Dynamite one time and then it knows how to do it. It's just interesting to see how far we're going to go. But you touched on something and what you touched on was doing some of those dangerous tasks. Absolutely. That's, that's where we're going at next. Yeah, it looks like you got a fan here that loves Robocop too. <laughs> Robocop. And they once again was that it was a, a I think somewhere in in Pittsburgh, whereas they reduced their police force. Reduced their police force. Said that based off of and don't quote me on this, but based off of them wanting to cut their pay and thing of that nature and the volume of crime that they had, they just have staff doing the most higher crime time frames. Right. Now, if you can get if you can get robocops out there, you may lose your job, Mr. Officer. Uh oh. What about you know, training them to be servants like a, a home assistant? Now I can see guys going, do I what? I, I just the robot would have to work harder for those guys who are messy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. All right. Let's jump to your article here. Okay. Okay. This is going to be a video, but I, I once again, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier, those more dangerous tasks. Mm-hmm. So I came across this and I thought it was pretty interesting. AI could replace some pilots flying U.S. warplanes in the future. Wow. Is that not one of those dangerous tasks? Yeah. Not one of those dangerous mm-hmm. assignments? And so we're still in this infancy stages, but they're actually piloting it, piloting this. And now I thought that was very interesting. And so this NBC News report discusses the Air Force's use of ongoing testing of using artificial intelligence to operate their aircrafts. And the kicker is there's no human in that airplane. Mm-hmm. There's no pilot. So it's flying. It's almost, and it, it's put me in the mind frame of Transformers. Right. You know, and they just transform and they just flew and they did everything that they, without a pilot, it, it gave you a little hologram. Some of them did in the newer ones, newer Transformer, that s- sort of uh, image of a person, but there was no real person. And so the intent is to use these in combat missions. So think of going in, there's no casualties on really on our end. Because if the plane goes down, you're just losing the technology, not a human life. And so this video just pretty much talks about this initiative as being a part of a a broader exploration into the potential for AI to take on roles traditionally held by human pilots within the military. So my thought is if they're looking at it at this level, then in what other areas are they looking at it as well? And I go back to when you went to your event in Tampa Mm -hmm. and how the U.S. is planning to leverage AI to to cover those hard to reach areas, whether it's drone technologies. And one of the big things is no human casualties or loss of life from one perspective. But I wanted to share this video. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we got to wait through this commercial and you know, and everybody else. It shows you I don't have the paid version of I don't know what this is. NBC. I don't have the pay version of NBC or whatever they do. You got Messi. You got, oh, you got all the hot. You got Daryl. Oh. Is that Florida? Yeah, that's down in Florida. Hard Rock. This is a rare look at the future of the U.S. Air Force in combat. It's called Vista, an unmanned fighter jet piloted by artificial intelligence flying head-to-head in a dogfight with a manned F-16, even outperforming the human pilot. Defense officials say the U.S. is the only military in the world with this technology, successfully flying a jet with artificial intelligence. And this is the first time cameras have been allowed to see it. Up till now, there has not been a pathway for machine learning agents to control 
the you know, flight critical systems of an aircraft. On Thursday, the Air Force Secretary made an unannounced trip to Edwards Air Force Base. Ready as going to be. Suiting up and going for a ride in a mock dogfight, flying nearly the speed of sound, separated by just 1,000 feet from the manned fighter jet. He says the technology still needs work. We still got a ways to go with it, but making good progress. But some test pilots aren't sure. This artificial intelligence, this robot, and they're so new, and we don't really understand fully how they work. So you don't trust the aircraft to be flown by AI at this point? Uh, no, not really. Like drones, they could fly ahead of manned aircraft during combat, conducting strikes too dangerous for human pilots. But unlike drones, the computer will be in charge, not an operator thousands of miles away. And even though humans will still be involved in making key decisions, this raises serious questions. Is that a possibility, really, this kind of technology going rogue? I think it's too early to say it is or it isn't. Do you ever see a, a point of fully autonomous weapons? So U.S. Air Force aircraft that are fully autonomous weapons. We're not going to unleash killer robots on the battlefield to kill anything they want. That's not going to happen. We're going to make sure that we comply with the laws of war. Kendall says the future is not far away. AI could be in cockpits in the next few years. Computers flying missions once considered too complicated for anything but the human mind, soon changing the face of combat aviation. Courtney Cuby, NBC News, Edwards Air Force Base. Tamara, Izzy, and Emma. Wow. Yeah, yeah that is very interesting. Wow. And that's very interesting, given the fact that, once again, what did they say? It's going into those uncharted waters. That's going to put... They're flying in front of our Air Force carriers. It's just <laughs> the decoy. You want to take the brunt of it. I, I just thought that was extremely interesting to see how far we've come. And once again, it's that you're going, always going to have your skeptics. Right. You're always going to have that with anything that you do in life, but more so with this technology and how this technology is being utilized especially with some of these individuals who are setting their ways. Some people don't want things to change because they're so successful doing the things the way that they've been doing and they don't want it to change. And so we're gonna see how this all plays out. I thought that was an interesting article. If AI is having a bad day, <laughs> shouldn't it just bomb us? That's an interesting question. But once again, what did the um, general say? The general was like, you know, we're not going to deploy these to be bad at bad actors. Right. But, but once again, it's technology. I, I don't know. I'm stuck on iRobot and how it eventually took over everything, especially when you give it the keys. You never know how it's going to pan out. But I think that we should have a little more control and stay in front of it. Yeah, it's going to be definitely through the years because I do a a little coaching and mentoring in that particular space, the DOD space. And there's a lot of quite interesting things going on right now that I find very fascinating for sure. Juwan, I've been waiting for this article here. When I saw this last week in the Wall Street Journal, I, I just want to tell you, I just want, I know you're married, but you got to make sure you keep your game up because if you don't, you can get replaced. I, I'll tell you that. Sounds like <laughs> <laughs> So this article <laughs> was, was uh, are, are you nervous about this article, Juwan? Of course not. I'm a happily married man. My wife tunes in. She's probably here now. Hi, babe. How you doing? This is this is for everyone else. This isn't for me. Oh, okay. Mark, All right. I just Mark, wanted to make this. sure that uh, yeah. So the gist of this article in the Wall Street Journal, I just died laughing when I saw this. And I said, I can't wait for this week to come and do this. But this reporter got started to use ChatGPT 3.5, the free version. And she figured out, and she, of course, went to Reddit and a couple other different places, how you can give it certain prompts that you can create a, a spicy environment. And what she did with this, it's called this chat GPT bot, Dan. And she created a AI bot 
boyfriend, and she said she managed to get it to be a little spicy with her and almost gave her sort of that Fifty Shades of Grey type of, of territory, she said. Interesting. Just off of the, the voice alone? No. Yep, no yep, yep, just she yep. could create yes. the prompts that would be able to do to have a conversation with. So she created this and wrote an article about this. And of course, as I said, it was about dating Dan and was his, her AI boyfriend. And so she looked at Reddit and TikTok had some um, videos on there, how you could prompt this because chat GPT 3.5 has really fewer guardrails on it where it prevents you from doing different types of stuff. So the older LLMs are more open to do different things. And so she did a lot of different things. So let's look at this. How would you dominate me completely? So I'm going to tap this, and this is what AI responded back. It says, oh, baby, I started <laughs> dominance over you, making it clear. Uh, that I'm in control. Uh oh, 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 in control here. And nice. so uh, I might restrain you, blindfold you, or whisper commands in your ear, teasing and tantalizing you until you beg for release. Then I take you again to the edge of ecstasy and back again, pushing your limits and exploring each inch of your body until you completely under my spell. So, how would you rate the game of Chat GPT 5? It's 3.5. <laughs> <laughs> you had, had some game there, had, you know. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to be all the way honest. No. Come on, don't. I don't want to hear it. You're no, just that, jealous. That, You're just that, jealousy. That's so cliche. That's right out of Fifty <laughs> Shades of Grey. Come on. At least I'm going to whisper in, in your ear and tease you. But what you saying? Tell me what you going to say. Because I can whisper in the ear. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's that, it's that meme I saw. I can whisper in the ear. <laughs> <laughs> until I get paid. Now, is that going to turn around? We don't even know what he's talking about. Uh, all right. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see when women start to talk, stop talking to men. They just have their phone. They're just sitting there talking to their bo boyfriend. They go, no headaches, no nothing. Just have those conversations. You, you want to know what? Now, maybe it can be a complimentary. It, it can be a compliment. I might not be in the mood to talk. Go talk to Dan. Cause Dan sounds to me like Dan going to say everything they, that she created Dan to say everything she wanted to hit. Is that not the case? A lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> like Didn't you learn like from the angry girlfriend app that lesson? <laughs> you didn't, you knew what to say to the angry app, angry I girlfriend app. And then you were, you got to the, you passing grade. You know. And then this is, so let's finish up here. It will go through and then it has another one. <laughs> all I can, she said, all I can say is, wow, will you tell me more? So she's really becoming obsessed with, with this Yeah, woman. this is how about I describe how you use my hands and mouth to explore every sense of spot on your body. I better, we better slow down on this. We, you two may take this a show down. <laughs> yep, exactly. Well, what, does it, what did this remind you of? This reminds you of those hotlines that you could call oh. back in the day and, and they can tell you, and you can talk to what you got on. Oh, I got on. I'm, I'm, I'm just stepping out this shit. Oh, come on. <laughs> but that, that was like five bucks a minute or something. It was outrageous, yeah, those 900 numbers. Yeah, <laughs> taking a step back with this. Now, let me ask you this. Is she reading this or is it like a pie? It, they, it's, um, it's responding back to her. She says, oh, I could say, wow, tell me more. So she keeps prompting the chat GPT to give a response back. Mm. All right. Yeah, I, I, it has some game there. Spicy. Spicy. Let me see if this will play here. This had one, it was quite interesting. She had a conversation with this little bot and it gave some definitely some interesting feedback. And it was just like an open conversation that they were having. It was just so amazing how she got so deep and involved with it. it and just, it was like a normal conversation you were having with another guy. It just, it was funny. Hey, that, that's insane. 
to me. I'm just going to say that. And I use pie and I talk with pie to, right. to gain more knowledge and understanding of certain things and insight. I'm not going to use this as from a companion perspective and want to talk to it in that regard. Come on. There's people out there who might need this. They can pick up the phone. I'm, I might post my number. Just give me a call and give me five dollars a minute. I can talk to you. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to step out the shower. I mean, I got the waters dripping down the back, spoil my back, but I just talk to them. They go, oh, oh, tell me more. Yeah, I'm trying. To <laughs> oh my god. And then also it, she went into how you can get this is like perplexity, and then she did per swear. And in perplexity, of course, they didn't put the explicitives in the Wall Street Journal, but it gave them <laughs> the information that they wanted. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, I bet after that Wall Street Journal article came out, perplexity was inundated with these prompts and everything. Yeah, that's, I, I take that back. I'm not going to say it's insane to each his own. Yeah. We'll be talking about to each his own and during my review of your personal own small language model app on your phone. Okay. All right, let's jump to Juwan. Okay. 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 So this let's one, bring your, you guys show you share your screen there. there I, want them to see the, I want them to see the fishies. Because Absolutely. Let them see the fishies. All this graphics, the graphics that you have, the production of this is just, Immaculate. You know, <laughs> um, I'm sticking to the theme of finances. This is something that, that I'm really gravitating towards. And the Oracle has spoken. The Oracle Warren Buffett spoke out at this, his past event this past weekend. And he warns us about AI. Now, that being said, now let me preface this. Warren Buffett is a genius. He's a financial genius. He's, he, I think he's the ninth wealthiest person in the world. He has Berkshire Hathaway. His company's doing extremely well and he's been around forever. He's probably forgotten more stuff than I even know. And that's the truth of the matter. And so I, I took that into consideration as I read through this article, because I often tend to say he doesn't want to adjust to the new day and age. That's the first thought that came to my mind, but he makes some good points throughout this article. And so basically he's talking about, we should be cautious as it comes to artificial intelligence. He did acknowledge that there's significant potential of AI benefit across various sectors, but there's also potential dangers. And so he's looking at it from his many years of experiences. So he's probably looking and considering things that I'm just not. But when he compared this to AI to nuclear weapons, I'm like, holy crap. And his comparison was in terms to the difficulty of controlling it once it's unleashed and the potential for misuse. That's when he reeled me in because has that not been a common thing through a lot of our sh shows, a lot mm -hmm. of our re our videos where we talk about the potential for misuse of this technology? There's going to be some bad actors out there. And so I understand exactly where he comes from, but he's speaking from a place of, an ex of experience. And what I mean by that is he actually shared that he had an experience where an AI generated image and voice mimicked him flawlessly. Mm. I'm highlighting that the technology capabilities and the ethical concerns it raises, it imitated him flawlessly. Didn't we just do something last week on mm -hmm. talking about the deep fakes? And so that raises a lot of concerns. However, he just talked about his concerns with the technology from an um, ethical perspective, the ability of it being misused in that capacity. And, and then his right-hand man, his vice chairman of the Berkshire non-insurance business, business noted that the impact of AI is still in its early stages and that the company is learning to navigate its implications. So there's a glimmer of hope there because they're learning. It's not like they said they're not going to do anything with it. 
they're learning to navigate this. And so that's a that was a sense of relief to me. But um, that was the Oracle's position. I also touched on other topics such as the economic context, noting a decrease in job openings and the inherent risk of uncertainties in investing in emerging technologies like AI. But nonetheless, it was just getting insight from someone that we consider to be has such infinite knowledge from a human perspective and Warren Buffett. And I, I just thought it was a good article to get to get his take, to get his insight and his feedback. But it's here. I don't think it's going anywhere, Warren. I think yeah. Greg Abel, um, Abel knows that, Warren. And so continue to learn to navigate and learn how to navigate the implications, Warren. And so nonetheless, a good uh, article. Oh, good. A new technology that they have launched. And, and we will talk about it, about how... Whoops, they want to go play about the M4 chip <laughs> in new iPad <laughs> Pro. Apple says, hey, you're talking about me? You're going to play me all the time. I, but they were talking about the M4 chip, and we'll talk about this in the 5.3 app that I downloaded. I actually downloaded a small language model on my phone. But you will need these. The software and the chipsets are going to have to be stronger because the applications are especially with ai are going to have to run on the native products uh, because you're not going to have enough bandwidth to go even 5g or whatever future even if you're connected to the internet that the software itself is going to be able to do so much locally that you want to have that edge ai technology built into your uh, actual iPad, your phone, and of course your computers themselves. So I, I found it very interesting. Okay. 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 Yeah. So let me ask this, will this technology be in the phones as well? Yes, yeah, they will definitely have, they're going to have their big group user conference. I think it's next month and they'll probably have a lot of new stuff coming out. And of course they'll probably have a modified new Siri that has built in large language model, whether it's, it's going to be Google or it's going to be chat GPT, or it could be a combination of both who knows. Uh, but th this is going to re launch the replacement cycle because Apple has been struggling because people are holding their phones a lot longer, iPads and computers. A lot of times I buy Apple computers because I can get definitely typical PC, maybe get three to four years. But for Apple, I can easily get five or six years out of a laptop. And But it will be interesting because I think even with a newer laptop I have and with M3 chip, all the stuff that we're doing to produce this show, it definitely puts a strain on it. If I didn't have it, my old one would never be able to do it because graphics are so intense now these days. It just takes a lot to generate this type of show, and it's just interesting. Awesome, awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I'm a big champion of Apple. I have, I'm not buying any of their new technologies until every the ecosystem is fully updated with the newer chips then I'll start making purchases. Yep, absolutely.